All right, guys. We're going to talk a lot about uh, growth strategy in the gaming IP, and uh, we're just going to kick it off right now. Uh, Reynold, we should talk a little about your company. Just introduce your company, and uh, the floor is yours. Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Reynold Tan from uh, Balan Co Entertainment Singapore. So uh, we do. We are actually in a, uh, mainly doing the business of video games, and Singapore is actually a headquarter for Asia. We covers uh, business commercially. Um, the products from Japan uh, represent them in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, oh. Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, and so on. Yep, that's all. Great. Olivier, you want to introduce your company and uh, some of the things you guys are doing? I know you guys have some exciting titles and announcements to make, so go ahead and floor is yours. Hello, everyone. So I'm Olivier Dorotelier, Managing Director for Ubisoft Singapore, uh, Chengdu, and Ubisoft Philippines. So uh, Ubisoft is a publisher well known for brands like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Just Dance, etc., Rainbow Six. Uh, in Singapore, uh, we are uh, developing uh, big, big brands. So uh, we are soon releasing uh, the next Assassin's Creed together with our friends uh, from Montreal, and we are also developing a brand new IP, uh, Skull and Bones, uh, that was announced this year at E3. Great, Long. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Long Ding. Uh, I'm German manager of Game Film Come to us uh, in Vietnam. Um, we we are the top. Um, global mobile game publisher in, in all over the world. Um, in, uh, we have a lot of games out there, but um, there are some very popular games in, in, uh, uh, that we have published. It like um, Some of the World, A Fishing, uh, Critica, or Dragon Blaze. Yeah. Right, Juan. Hi, everyone. My name is Juan Cho from uh, 433. Uh, we're based in Korea. Uh, compared to my competitors here, we're fairly young. Uh, we were established in 2009, but uh, our senior executive, including myself, we have over 15 years of uh, mobile gaming history, and um, we were invested by Tencent and Line three years ago for about 120 million. Uh, but unique thing about our company is uh, we incubate uh, young developers. Uh, we grow together, and uh, we publish their games, and we invested over. 30 uh, game, mobile game developers for MCN companies. And currently, uh, we partner up with uh, Warner Brothers and DC Comics. And we're coming out with a game called DC Unchained uh, early next year. Fantastic. So we'll kick it off. We don't have a lot of time today, but um, just a couple. So IP and gaming. We know that the gaming business is growing. It's a $108 billion business, you know, $46 billion in, in the mobile space. 47% of the revenue generated in global gaming is actually from Asia Pacific, led by China. Now, IP, you know, we can imagine working with IPs and brands are very difficult for all parties. You know, how do you first decide as a company, you know, who do you want to go with in terms of brand? Do you build your own IP? Or do you actually wait for brand IP holders to actually come to you? Juan, do you want to kick that off really quick, given the fact you just talked about the DC uh, collaboration? Sure, uh, so about Three years ago, we released a game called Hero uh, for Kakao in Korea. Uh, that game generated about, uh, about $80 million in revenue just from Korea. 99% of the revenue came from Korea. And we wanted to bring this game outside of Korea. And, however, the UI UX is very complicated and it was meant for very core uh, players for Korea. So we knew that uh, it would be very difficult for Western audience or, or people outside of Asia to play this game. So we decided that we needed to partner up uh, with an IP, uh, so an IP that uh, Western users could identify easily. And we're lucky to uh, partner up with WB, and we're coming out the game uh, very shortly. And you know, what's your thoughts on that? You, know, giving, you come from the IP side of the business, uh, Reynold. Can you give an example of you know, how do you guys determine you know, whether or not you guys are licensed IP, as well as building your own. Um, and on top of that, I think you were talking about a little bit of local relevancy, right? Well, uh, it's a very interesting question that you asked because uh, Bananenko is a company that deals with a lot of IPs. 
uh, some that do belongs to us, some that doesn't. And uh, interestingly, how do we actually determine which IP is really suitable for the region and which IP you know, is, is most uh, sensible? So mainly because um, first thing, we deal with a lot of Japan anime manga IPs. So really kind of uh, it depends on the popularity of the IP. Um, of course, research fat fine. Uh, are always done in terms of user feedback in the popularity of IP. And secondly, you know, uh, whether that IP itself, because this region, interestingly, is a little bit more westernized than Japanese. So certain IPs that have a little bit of Western culture actually are kind of suitable for the market here. So with that uh, in mind, certain IPs that fit such requirements always have the priority of uh, being selected to push out for the markets over here. Of course, the importance of um, uh, building your own IP is a totally different case as well because uh, doing a licensing deal and if you own your own IPs, uh, there's always a pros and cons in both. Uh, in an IP deal, you don't need so much marketing investment because the IP itself is probably already well known. But doing your own IP wise, uh, it never goes away to somebody else. As long as you keep it, it's always yours. Any marketing investment you put into it is always yours. Olivia, do you have any thoughts on that, given Ubisoft builds a lot of their own IPs? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think it's the, for us, it's the heart of the business. So uh, we consider ourselves as a creator of universe. Uh, what we think is uh, we've, we've been investing a lot in creating IPs, and I think it's been pretty successful in the last what, 12 years, uh, we're able to create brands like Assassin's Creed, like Far Cry, uh, revive the Rainbow Six franchise, uh, Just Dance, etc. Now we are working from Singapore on, on the skull and bones, this new IP. And so we consider that that's the heart of the business because the bigger and stronger we make our IP, uh, the best, so the best will be able to uh, bridge to new markets, new opportunities, etc. Uh, that's that's probably the the strongest part of our business. If we if we have a strong universe, we'll we'll be able to get the opportunity out of our core market. We are we are also uh, very lucky. I think that we are uh, we started on the uh, HD market console with very strong publishing teams as well, that allow us, um, and those platforms, uh, high-end PC, console, etc., allow us to create strong and deep universe, strong story, strong immersive uh, na narrative, and, and that's where we can really uh, uh, create, create IPs and reach out uh, other media or other markets. And Log, I mean, you had, he had an interesting story they were telling me that um, how do you guys select your IPs and what do you determine um, if the IP actually makes sense? Um, as you may know, because uh, we, we already uh, we are both uh, developer and publisher, so we, um, we, uh, we have developed our own IP like uh, the, the case uh, with uh, some on the world. We have developed and published ourselves and in terms of revenue, we uh, reached more than uh, nearly uh, one billion US dollar and it's very well known. Um, and on the other hand, uh, the developer or the, um, the IP owner, they they come to us as well to call publish, publisher and even my company, we, we go out and search for the good IP and good game. Yeah. Which just sets up to the you know, next question, you know, talking about the growth in, in the gaming space using IP and brands. Um, you know, by doing that, what are some of the advantages um, when launching with a brand or IP that's well known in digital storefronts, you know, whether it's Google Play Store, App Store, uh, Steam, or PS4. Um, Reynold, do you want to talk a little about that? Because you're also in the console space, correct? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, consoles products are definitely on uh, digital storefront as well, PlayStation Network, and uh, of course, Steam. And it's really important to uh, put up the products out there, not just physically, but digitally, because uh, digital audience or consumers are slightly different from physical. Uh, in terms of video games wise, interestingly, um, which most publisher would not like to face is a resale of the product itself uh, as a second hand product or as a used product. So, but uh, however, unfortunately, there was kind of a, a common thing going around in the market, especially in this region. So if your product's on digital, that's 
where you do not face such problems because digital do not have any resale value. You couldn't resale the product itself. So with that, you actually capture every single consumer once. And with that, you know, you don't have to face challenges like a physical product does. So it's important to keep it up there. But the thing is, um, digital audience um, have a lot of uh, requirements and restrictions as well. It's not that easy as just putting up there and the products will just sell because uh, it, de it determines by how suitable the product is. So right now, uh, especially if the product is on low data downloads or if the product itself has a free-to-play kind of element, it actually works very well on digital storefront comparing to the physical one. Wow, what are your thoughts on that? I mean. What are IPs and genres that have resonated that you think um, also is kind of helping? Well, for, uh, for us, uh, when we look at IPs, uh, first of all, is, is for marketing purpose. Um, the user acquisition cost has to be lower when you, we use the IP. And just for example, um, the average user acquisition cost for our RPG game is about $4, four US dollars. And uh, if we work with an IP, um, and we worked with Japanese IP uh, before, uh, the user acquisition cost will come down significantly to about $2.50. $2 so in that respect, this is very significant. Um, of course, we have to pay uh, the royalties to the IP holders, but the benefits that we receive uh, just from uh, from featuring uh, from from the platform holders, Google or Apple, uh, as well as um, the strong um, what is it uh, um, visibility uh, from from the users, um, it will justify the user acquisition costs uh, since it would it would come down much much lower. So uh, uh, for us, we we would always look at whether um, the IP uh, combining with their game. Uh, whether we could have some great synergy and lower our costs to, to acquire new users. Olivia, what's your thoughts? I mean, with your own IP, how do you get noticed in store, digital storefronts? So I think the, the, the most important thing about an IP, when we're talking about an IP, what defines the IP is it has an audience already. So uh, it has a fan base. So when you launch, you launch an IP on the store or wherever, uh, you have already fans of this brand that will come and come specially for, for your game. So that makes the first step of acquisition easier, variety easier, and that's where, that's where we, we, we can reduce the uh, acquisition costs uh, for, for, for users. So that's, that's the, the main thing with uh, the IP. The, the second thing is also that uh, if the IP exists, it means that the universe itself that was built is coherent, deep, and that's what makes also a, a strong guarantee for a good experience uh, for the user. When, when we know that, for example, uh, when we release an Assassin's Creed game on mobile, uh, we have a lot of people coming because they know the Assassin's Creed uh, universe and they know they, will, they want to enjoy it through uh, another media. So we'll get to that in a second of like how you guys get to a universe that is recognizable long i mean um you know what genres and ips resonate in vietnam no, actually in, in vietnam uh, the situation is quite um, quite difficult for the the ip from other country except china because uh, you already know that um the control between uh, vietnam and china and also the vietnamese people they they have um, known a lot about the the, uh, the movie or the country, especially for the Three Kingdom story. So um, a lot of uh, Vietnamese publisher or even uh, the publisher from other country, they, they come to Vietnam and with the, the IP of uh, Three Kingdom, they still success. Yeah. So Chinese IP actually does really well in Vietnam. Yeah. So that's that's a very interesting takeaway. Um, yeah, going to that next country is like, you know, what's involved in working with brands' IPs, um, and how does the ideation of the game get determined? How do you know which brand you're going to go take, especially when we're working IP holders, right? Which brands you take to market, or and you know, a lot of times, brands do come to you with their own IPs. Uh, Raynald, do you want to sh shine some light, both between your in-house and 
And sure. I mean, um, it's because IP itself, uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, we, we manage a lot of uh, Japanese IP. Some of them are well known. Uh, so, but I really wouldn't ever advise anyone to sit down and wait for IP owners to approach you. Uh, you have always, you know, you have to always be proactive. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, dealing with IP owners, um, we are most, most of the time we are required to treat it like our own IPs, uh, how we deal with it. So, you know, whether how popular the product is, and of course the business terms comes into it, uh, it plays a major role in deciding whether the product uh, is feasible in the market. There's many contractual uh, uh, agreements that has to be made. I mean, especially royalties, um, where it has to be mutually agreed, uh, especially marketing investment agreement between both, what kind of commitments are we looking into it. So that really determines whether, uh, how much the product potential has on the market itself. One, I mean, th this is probably something that's probably closer to your projects today, these days. You know, what's involved and, and you know, how, how do you determine which brands you work with? So for Korea especially, um, compared to the Japanese or Chinese developers, uh, we don't really have a global hit, um, uh, unlike uh, Sumner's were, which is very unusual. So uh, Korean developers in general, um, we really don't know the US or the Western uh, consumers behavior especially. So uh, we're, especially Korean developers, is very keen on working with uh, uh, the Western IPs just to, to have a broader global reach. And so uh, once again, um, when we w work with IP holders, uh, we'll make sure that we hear they're fully cooperative, um, how we could use their IP, how we, uh, how we could uh, implement it uh, within our game. Um, whether uh, it will resonate uh, with the Western uh, users as well, too. Uh, it's not an easy process, to be honest. And, um, and working with uh, several IP holders, it usually takes twice as much time uh, than having your own development. Um, however, the end result, we're very satisfied and it's worth the investment. Olivier, I mean, from both in-house and working with also third-party IPs, um, what is that experience like? So. <clears throat> with the with the current marketing costs that you have to be noticed, with the production costs and the bar is uh, going up all the time in terms of quality that you need to uh, to deliver. Uh, what what's key today is to make sure that uh, your IPs or the, the the game that you put on on the store have a wide uh, potential audience and and uh, mass market appeal. Uh, and that's that's something we are we are looking at uh, very closely is uh, because you cannot come with even if you have a, an IP you cannot come with an average game you cannot come with an average marketing campaign so you need to push everything uh, and invest massively and that's where that's where you you need to make sure that the the, the appeal of your of the IP will be strong enough to justify the investment that you are that you are making so that's that's an evolution of the market it's going always towards more blockbuster so that's that's uh, an important point then after uh, the experience working with uh, ip owners or licensing it's true that uh, for the developer you need to be able to put this money on the table to develop the game and to uh, be on par with the competition so there's a there's a good balance to find between the licensor that wants probably to make money uh, out of the IP and, and the developer that needs to make to put the quality uh, they need to, you know, pass the bar in terms of uh, quality. For, as a publisher and developer, um, Olivia, I'll stick with you. Um, how how's the ideation process take place? I mean, is a lot of you creating storyboards and things of that nature and back to the IP owners? Or do sometimes IP owners come to you and say, this is an idea we have, some crazy uh, game idea. Can you guys build this for us and work with us? What's usually that, that um, balance between publisher, developer, you know, making a, a case on, on the game versus the IP owner coming in and giving you guys ideas? So the, 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 the process of creating, so if you, if you, if it makes things simpler if you work with an existing IP because you have a frame already, you know, you know, 
you know the fantasy, you know the world, you know the characters, you know what type of gameplay you can build around it. So what what is difficult is then mm -hmm. to be true to the IP that you are you are working on. Um, but usually for us, as we are creating most of uh, of the IPs that we are working on, the 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 beginning comes usually from the creative team that will come with a new experience, propose propose a new experience, propose a universe, and th that's how we, we grow it. It's uh, very rare that it comes from just a business idea or, or a crazy idea. The, 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 the most difficult part in this world is uh, execution of the ideas. Uh, it's very complex technologies involved are extremely complex. The size of the team are, are bigger and bigger, so you need to be able to execute on your core expertise. So uh, uh, that usually comes from the creative team to uh, bring the idea and then after to face probably a more uh, business team to make sure that the appeal of what they are doing is, is, uh, has a potential. And you know, we're looking at um, also the, uh, the reverse is happening as mobile games and games companies using brand IP to go to market, the reverse is also happening, um, like Ubisoft and Bandai Namco. Um, and also Long, you talked about a little about um, in the backstage about Gameville and Comtus also producing your own IPs yeah. for, um, for other, other businesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, like the example that I already mentioned, uh, we develop um, outside the, the game Summon War, is, and um, we develop outside but uh, for other games like um, uh, Dungeon Link, we have um, a corporate with Cartoon Network uh, for the, um, uh, the cartoon movie Adventure Time uh, to bring the, the character into our game Dungeon Link. And it's similar to the, um, the other story like um, for our upcoming game like uh, this Archer A uh, Begin, um, it's a mobile version, but uh, the original version is um, for mobile archery um, online. It's very well known game, very uh, very good IP. Yeah. So just you know, we'll, with few minutes left, I'd like to kind of get um, your thoughts on what can you advise content owners, advertisers, IP owners that are not in the game space and trying to explore getting into the game space. What advice would you give them? Uh, Juan, why don't you go ahead and start that off? Um, yeah, uh, for us, um, and I can speak for a majority of the Korean developers, we're always looking for good IPs to work with. Uh, once again, um, like once again, uh, just just to repeat what I said before, the Japanese uh, developers usually have good IPs from the beginning, from the console days, um, and the Chinese they usually uh, outsource good uh, or work with good Western developers. And so they, they know um, the Western audience very well. But, but Koreans, uh, even though we had a good hit uh, back home, uh, it doesn't really resonate well in the US or the European or the Western market. It's usually, uh, if it's a hit in Korea, it'll just reach out Pan-Asia. Uh, and so for us uh, to reach a global audience, of course we could do a mass investment and try to understand better and work with uh, the consumers in the Western market. But it's, for us, it's easier to, to, to partner up with uh, good IP holders and work together to make a, a great game. So for, for us, we're always open, um, I, and I can say that to many Korean developers as well and publishers, uh, that we're always looking for good IPs. To, and to help your business. In terms of genres, sorry to interrupt. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of genres, what genres do you think that you guys would be open to from sports, TV personalities, sure. movies? So um, in Korea, our, our best selling games are usually RPG games, uh, role playing games, especially action role playing games. So uh, anything that, uh, that could help us um, with the storytelling um, and to resonate well with the Western audience, we're, we're always open. But uh, there are other fantastic uh, games out there in Korea, casual games, sports games. So uh, yeah, we're, we're very open to any IPs. Long, any advice in terms of? Um... Uh, I think it's very important that um, the IP holder, they, they find the right partner who have experience in uh, and very good um, 
and worldwide uh, they have uh, in developing and then also in publishing because they know the market uh, is very important uh, because the, and they, they have the people in the market who can deal with the owner of the challenge and make sure that um, your game successfully. Yeah. Olivier, final thoughts? So uh, I think that for those people who want to use their IP to go into game, uh, they, they, they really need to uh, understand that uh, it's not just about a good idea that will make a good game, it's about a very talented team. Uh, and so you have to pick right your partners in terms of uh, development. You have to give them the freedom. Um, it's, 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 it's a very obvious that uh, the gaming industry is an uh, industry of dreamer. A lot of people, a lot of people have good ideas about what the next game could be, etc. And especially if you own your IP, but if you are out of the the game space, it's, it's, it's very important to understand that the the execution would be uh, very hard if you want to have a, a nice and, and and a good game. And so, uh, you need to trust uh, a team with. Uh, a lot of talent to uh, bring your brand to uh, to a good game, and that's 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 very important. Right now, I mean, um, I think the important is to know the target audience because for gaming market itself, uh, it covers a wide range of between, for example, like twelve, all the way even to thirty five or forty years old kind of target group range. Uh, I have to say, a, a huge chunk of them are actually male. Um, target audience. So it's important for IP owners uh, and brand owners to know that these are the target audience they are looking at and are they interested to reach out to this group of consumers, which makes up a lot of the prime uh, internet group nowadays. Like, for instance, I think these are the same group of audience on YouTube as well. And you can see gaming videos or uh, stream videos nowadays on YouTube or, or Twitch get a, a lot of hype. Uh, a lot of uh, focus, uh, a lot of talking points, and that's where I think it's important for IP owners to know that these are the opportunity that will bring your product to the next level or to a different industry and cater to the consumer that they have always never been able to tap to based on what they actually already have now. So it's, I think it's a good uh, value added to their brand and uh, it not just help you know, to establish uh, the, the IP presence, it also helps to establish their core audience. Uh, and of course, I mean, coming to, especially in this region itself, um, to be in the, to having IPs in the video game industry, uh, language is also one of very key criteria because like, for instance, um, in Thailand, um, if you do English, it will not be as successful as being a localized language. Um, same goes for Vietnam, and same is probably goes for Indonesia as well. So language is a lot of a challenge for a lot of IP owners nowadays because not many of them look at it in that way, and not many IP owners understand that the importance of Asian languages helps to penetrate the market that they failed to do it in the first place. So I mean, these this are my, uh, my advice, I think, for IP owners if they're really interested in investing into the region. Fantastic. I'm going to open the floor up to questions just because we have a little bit more time. Um, any questions? Is there a mic being passed around? Questions about IP? Yeah. Nope. Well, I want to give a round of applause for the four uh, participants up here. If you guys want to talk to them. Afterward, they'll be outside. I um, also want to just thank Branded for um, putting this together. They did a fantastic job um, the last three days. Uh, next session's up, and you know, hopefully you guys have a nice evening. People traveling into Singapore, enjoy the F1 weekend. All right, thank you, guys.